word feral has many different meanings, but here we're using it in the sense of children who either reared themselves without human companionship or more likely were reared by some form of animal. Stories of children raised by animals date back as far as ancient Rome. Romus and Remus, the mythical twin founders of Rome, were said to have been raised by a she-wolf. Rhea Silvia was a priestess, and when it was found that she had been pregnant and had children, King Amulius, who had usurped his brother's throne, ordered her to be buried alive and for her children to be killed. The servant was given an order to set them in a basket on the Tiber River. Instead, the children were taken by Tabrinius, the river god, to the shores where a she-wolf found and raised them. In real life, there's been around 100 young individuals who live isolated from human contact at a very young age, with little or no experience of human care, social behavior, or language. The term feral children is used to refer to children who have suffered severe abuse or trauma before being abandoned or running away. Though sometimes the subject of folklore and legends, typical feral children are portrayed as having been raised by animals. While there are many cases of children being found in proximity to wild animals, there's no credible evidence of animals feeding or caring for children. The behavior described as being animal-like are the results of misdiagnosed conditions such as autism, deafness, or intellectual disability. Feral children lack the basic social skills that are normally learned in the process of enculturation. For example, they may be unable to learn to use a toilet, have trouble learning to walk upright after walking on fours all their lives, or display a complete lack of interest in human activity around them. They often seem mentally impaired and have almost insurmountable trouble learning a human language. The impaired ability to learn a natural language after having been isolated for so many years is often attributed to the existence of a critical period for language learning. So let us look at some journalistic accounts of children claimed to be raised by animals. The first known English story of a feral child outside of mythology was John of Liege. John grew up in the wilderness of Belgium after fleeing his home at the age of five to escape a religious war. He survived in the wilderness for 16 years, not being discovered until the age of 21. According to accounts made in 1644, John had a heightened sense of smell and had forgotten any language he knew. John did later learn to speak again. It's an extraordinary story. A little girl, neglected, rejected, abandoned by her parents. For comfort, she snuggles up in the farmyard kennels with the dogs. That becomes her home. They become her family for the next six years. They protect her, feed her, maybe even love her. And in return, she begins to act like them. A more recent case was Oksana Malaya, who was born in 1983 and found at the age of eight in Ukraine. Because Oksana's alcoholic parents could not care for her adequately, she had lived in a kennel behind her house with a pack of dogs for most of her young life. She had developed dog-like mannerisms and behavior patterns. She crouched, barked, growled, and smelled her food before eating it. She had extremely acute senses of hearing, sight, and smell. After she was discovered, she lived in a facility for disabled people where she found social interaction and learning language skills very difficult. I'm anthropologist Marianne O'Hotter on a quest to find the child known here as the monkey boy of Uganda, a boy supposedly raised by monkeys. In 1982, Robert Myangia lost his parents in the Uganda Civil War at the age of three when Milton's Obote soldiers raided the village around 50 miles from Kampala. Robert was believed to be about three years old and survived in the wild with were vervet monkeys. According to reports from those who rescued him in a while, Robert survived on fruits, berries, and roots for three years. When he was found by the soldiers of the National Resistance, he could not sit or stand, but only squat and jump. He neither smiled nor talked, but made jungle noises. Medina, a three-year-old found in Russia in 2013, lived with dogs from birth until she was three years old. She slept with them in the cold, ate food, and played with them. Her father left her after she was born, and her mother became an alcoholic and started neglecting Medina. Found by social workers in 2013 in the town of Yufa after worried neighbors alerted them. She was completely nude, crawling on all fours, and engaging in dog-like behavior, including chewing on bones. Afterwards, doctors confirmed that she was still mentally and physically capable, despite being neglected for nearly her entire life. Oh, wow! Oh. Anyway, I'm wondering, what kind of, what kind of guy is this? It was really amazing to see such a guy making noise of, of an animal. So who was this mysterious wild child? Local authorities eventually identified him as John Sabunya, a four-year-old that had gone missing from a nearby village a year earlier. 
John Sabunya lived with monkeys for three years in the African jungle. John's abandonment in the jungles was due to the murder of his mother in 1988 and the death of his father from a civil arrest in Uganda in the early 1990s. While living with a colony of African green monkeys, John learned their mannerism, became adept at climbing trees, and lived on a diet of fruit, nuts, and berries for the next three years. In 1991, a tribeswoman saw John scavenging for food along with the monkeys. She reported it to the people in her village. When the villagers found John, he hurled sticks at them and tried to escape up a tree to avoid being taken away. To protect the boy from being taken away, a family of monkeys put up a ferocious fight against the villagers according to reports. After John's capture, the manager of the Kambuzenda Christian Orphanage took him in. There, he learned to speak and became more human. When he began to utter his first words, the orphanage found out that he had a fine singing voice. In 1999, he was part of a children's choir singing tour. Marcos learned how to mimic the sounds of different animals when he was just a child, alone in the wilderness. From 1953 to 1965, he lived here in Sierra Morena, surrounded by wolves, birds, and all sorts of other animals. They were his family, friends, and partners in helping find food to survive. Marcos Rodriguez Pantoya belonged to a poor family. He was only seven when his father sold him to a hermetic goat herder that lived in the isolated Sierra Marina Mountains of Spain. The goat herder who bought Marcos taught Marcos how to herd the goats and care for himself while living in the wilderness. Soon after, the goat herder died and Marcos was left all alone. But because of the teachings of the goat herder, he was able to cope with the environment. Marcos lived in the mountains for 12 years, from 1953 to 1965. He had no human contact and made friends with a small pack of wolves. The members of Spain's Guardia Civil captured him and brought him back to human civilization when he was 19. In 2007, director Gerardo Olivares discovered the boy's fascinating story. He tracked down Marcos who lived in the town of Arense in the region of Galicia and sought his help on the story. For the next two years, Marcos helped the director with filming of his amazing story, Intro Lobos, Spanish for Among Wolves. He even appears in the last scene of the movie, happily playing with a wolf. But before heading into a break, we get you India's Mowgli girl. You heard me right. This is a four-year-old girl who was rescued by cops from Bairij Forest in Uttar Pradesh. She was found in company of monkeys. Now she's been taken to a hospital. She's learning how to live uh, with the humans. Interestingly, uh, if you look at her, she cannot even speak right now. Eight-year-old girl Isa, better known as Mowgli girl, used to live with monkeys in Uttar Pradesh, India, Cartonite Wildlife Sanctuary. She had no language skills and was unable to talk or walk like a human. She walked on all fours and ate directly with her mouth rather than using her hands. Isa was afraid of people and prone to bouts of anger and violence when in close proximity to people. During her rescue by the police, monkeys screeched at them and tried to protect her from being taken. Now that she currently resides at the Nervan Center, she is learning how to walk on two legs. Although she has some improvement, it has been reported that she continues to walk on all fours. Hey guys, we come to the end of the video. Now that you heard some of the accounts of young people living with animals, do you think it's possible that animals can raise a human? Let us know in the comment section. Until then, take care.